Adequate air traffic separation is of utmost importance in today's world. This is only possible by following procedures which have been set to help us fly better. One of the most common instrument procedures followed in today's world for adequate air separation is a DME arc. Hey everyone, welcome back to Fly with Chubum and today we'll be talking about DME arcs. A DME arc is a procedure which is done to transition from on route to approach. It is also done to maintain traffic separation and to adjust and accommodate more air traffic. There are two ways you can perform a DME arc. One is with the heading and the cause bug and the second is with the RMI needle. In this video, we will only be discussing the heading and course method. So this is what a DME arc looks like. But before we go ahead, we should know what a DME is. Before we move ahead with the DME arc, make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this video with all your friends and colleagues. So. DME is a distance measuring equipment. It is basically a ground navigation device which helps us figure out our position relative to that particular station. A DME is generally coupled with a VOR as well. There are two ways a DME can be performed. The first is when you are going outbound and then you join the DME right or left as per the procedure and then go on the DME arc followed by whatever outbound procedure that you might be followed or instructed by the ATC. The next, which is a more common one, is when you come inbound towards the station and then you join the DME right or left as per the instructions and then follow the DME to join and then land at a particular aerodrome. A DME generally remains the same but the only difference is how you are going to enter that particular DME whether from outbound or from the inbound. Like this or from the outwards. The entire DME arc has a common distance. Let's take an example where we are doing a 12 DME. So the distance of 12 nautical miles from this particular point which is the station which is the reference point will be 12 at all points in the DME arc. 12 nautical mile here, 12 here, 12 here, 12 here and every single point throughout the DME arc all 360 degree directions. Let's take an example where you are coming inbound towards the station on a heading of 240 and you have to intercept this 12 DME arc. So you are turning left as per the procedure to join the DME and get yourself established. Now by what angle will you turn your aircraft towards the left hand side to intercept perfectly on the DME arc? That is by doing minus 80 degrees to your current heading. How? 240 minus 80 will give you 160. Now you turn left while approaching the DME arc to establish yourself on a heading of 160 and then you follow the arc. One important factor to keep in mind is when you are turning towards your new heading that which is 160. Over here the distance can be if this is a 12 DME arc it can be 12 decimal 5 or 12 decimal 7 depending on the aircraft type that you are flying. So if we are flying in a Cessna 172 will be turning at 12 decimal 5 whereas if we are flying in a faster aircraft such as the DA42 or some bigger aircraft we might fly uh, turn inbound on our new heading 160 at 12 decimal 7 or maybe 13 DME as per our aircraft speed. Now that you are established on the DME arc you should know how to keep up with the DME arc by following the heading and course method to establish yourself on the final course 310 inbound to the station to land. In this DME arc, since you are turning towards the right hand side, your heading and course will increase by 10 each. So your new heading from 160 will go to 170, then 180, then 1900 and so on. Whereas the course will be the current radial that you are crossing. Initially you are coming on a heading of 240 towards the station. That will be a radial of 240 minus 200 which is 040 plus 20 which is 060. So you are coming inbound on a radial of 060 from the station. So the next radial will be 070, then 080, 090, 100 and so on. Initially you were coming in on a course of 060 and the heading was 240. So you subtracted minus 80 to intercept the DME and then you were adding 10 in the heading and 10 in the course to get your next crossing radial and then the next one and then the next one to intercept on the final approach course. 
so the next heading is 160 and 070 then 170 080 180 090 and so on till the time you cross all of the radials and then you come on your final approach course one important factor to know about your DME arc is the lead radial this is the radial which is the final radial you will cross before turning inbound final on the final approach course so the lead radial is always 10 degrees either side of the final approach course if the final approach course is 310 over here the lead radial will be 10 degrees less and 10 degrees more than that the radial for the final approach course is 130 which is minus 200 plus 20 of 310 so for 130 your lead radials towards this side will be 120 and towards the other side will be 140 on this dme arc once you have reached the radial 120 crossing as per your instrument so you know that your lead radial is 120 now you will start turning inbound slowly towards your final approach course which is 310 this is another example where you are coming inbound and doing a left dme so in this you are coming inbound on a heading of 100 which will be radial 280 and you will turn right to intercept yourself on a 12 dme arc so if it is a 12 dme arc you might be turning at 12.5 or 13 dme as per your aircraft speed and then establishing yourself onto the left dme arc as i told you before in the left dme arc the heading and course will always decrease by 10 each whereas the initial turn being towards the right we will be adding 80 degrees so if your current heading is 1100 the new heading will be 180 and 180 is the heading that you will be flying to intercept yourself onto the 12 dme and then you will follow the heading and course minus minus 10 minus 10 each for each of them which will be the next heading 170 160 150 and so on till the time you intercept your lead radial and turn to the final approach course the entire dme procedure remains the same the most important factors being whether you're coming inbound to the station or going outbound from the station and how you choose to join the dme whether it is a right hand dme or a left hand dme So make sure you look at the approach plates in the correct way and understand what is your current position relative to the approach plates and then how you choose to join the DME as per the procedures. Now this is what happens when you come inbound towards the station to intercept onto the DME arc plus minus 80 of your current heading to intercept onto the DME arc right or left as per the approach plates. The second will be where we'll be going outbound from a station and then joining the DME arc. Let's say you're going outbound from a station on a heading of 030 which is also the radial 030 from the station and you'll be intercepting yourself on a 12 dme arc you'll be turning right side so around at approximately 11.5 or 11 dme you will turn right as per your aircraft speed to intercept yourself onto the dme and then the same procedure follows which is plus 10 plus 10 for your heading and course for your right hand dme whereas a minus 10 minus 10 for your left hand dme now one thing to keep in mind in this dme is to know what angle you'll be turning over here so that you are turning inbound again towards the station this is generally done at flying schools to help you practice the dme arc if you have to maintain that dme arc of 12 dme you will be turning an angle of 100 degrees towards the right or left if you are flying let's say 030 degrees if you turn 90 degrees you'll be going outbound if you turn 80 degrees you'll still be going outbound but further away from the station so to keep within the vicinity and maintain that 12 dme you have to turn a total of 100 degrees from your current heading to get to your new heading and intercept the dme so if you are going outbound on heading of 030 your new heading will be plus 100 which is 130